Hi everyone, Jackie with Full Moon Moon Designs and today I am starting the second part of this video and going to cover using some of these different things that I had cut on the Sizzix. And the first one I'm going to work on today is actually the pieces that I cut from the No Days Powder Wafer, which hopefully this is showing up okay. I've kind of moved my things around on my table here. So if you watch the first part, you notice that when I pulled out the roll of powder wafer, it seemed like it might have disintegrated a bit, and I, I need to follow up and find out if there is a shelf life on it. But what's interesting is I went back through my stash, and I had a roll that wasn't even, I mean, it was still in, a, um, in the container, my tote, but it wasn't, I had already pulled it out of the sealed bag. Still good. Uh, and in fact, this roll even feels a little bit thicker. I think this is some of the older stuff. So I'm not sure if some of that changed, um, but it should work just fine on both of these applications. I did go ahead and cut with the large, the bigs dies that I have. I have the snowflake. So I thought the first one I'd work on today would be this larger one. And so I had pulled, really, I just got this roll out just to pull out another sheet of carrier, uh, the carrier sheet, which Honestly, I think you could probably also use freezer paper because that's exactly what this reminds me of. Um, so if you do run out of carrier sheet or you've used it over and over again, uh, you could probably use freezer paper. And Carrie can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a bit larger than my cutout. And you'll see why. If you haven't seen me do this before or if you haven't worked with powder wafer material before, uh, you want to use the shiny side up. You've got your powder wafer piece. And it looks like I have some debris on here from my actual uh, dye. Just a little black outline on the edges. So I'm just going to kind of wipe that off. Okay, I had to edit the video a little bit because that took longer than expected. I still see a tiny bit of outline on some of these edges uh, just not coming off. And this is really a an adhesive type of, uh, or it's an adhesive, how do I want to word that? It is like an adhesive surface, so it makes sense that some of it is sticking to it a little bit. I just hope it doesn't come through and show up uh, in the finished product. But anyway, I have my shape here, I have my carrier sheet, and I have my griddle set up, and I don't have a marking on there for 180 but I've got it just under 200, uh, which is the first marking that shows up on it. Hopefully that is about the right temperature. I can feel the heat coming off of that. This tends to want to roll up on me a bit, so I am going to try to flatten it down a little bit. Now, what you want to do before you put your powder wafer piece down is actually put a layer of powder down on the surface first. So I am going to use, for this snowflake, I thought maybe this new violet powder from Valcox would be really pretty. This, or I was gonna grab a light blue, but we're gonna try this one. It is a transparent, so it may not work as well uh, as an opal, but we'll find out. So I am going, it, it'll work as far as making the powder wafer. I'm just thinking what it looks like as the finished product. So I'm gonna look for my spoon. Powders. I'm also going to grab a piece of paper. Okay, I have grabbed a piece of paper to put under here to collect my powder. I usually like to fold it just so it's easier to pick it up and dump the powder back in the jar. Uh, you're going to notice that there's a lot of powder. If you haven't worked with this before or seen my previous videos where I've done anything with this, it's going to seem like we're using a lot, but a lot of it is going to get put right back into the jar. So first thing I'm going to do is, of course, working with powders is you want to have a NIOSH approved uh, mask. I have a N95 here because I need new filters for my respirator. All right, masked up. I do have my readers because I'm wearing my contacts today so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to open up the powder. If you see me looking at my watch, it's just because I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting things into camera range here. So first I'm gonna put a nice layer down on the paper. If I would have thought about it, I probably would have put the paper and the cutout under some glass or something heavy just to 
uh, flatten it out, make everything nice and flat. Again, this isn't gonna be wasted. It's anything not uh, adhered to the piece when I'm done will actually just get reclaimed and back into the uh, jar. And that might've been a little heavy. I think in the video that Carrie did, she just sifted it on there. So now I'm gonna lay my piece down. Just making sure I got powder under all of it. Might need a little bit more on this edge. You can see I'm a little close to the edge of my carrier sheet, so I'm actually going to see what we can do about that. And I might just go ahead and tamp this down a little bit before I put my snowflake down, just so it's even or more even. Okay, I'm gonna set my snowflake down and now I'm going to put powder over it. I wanna get a good, oh, I would say probably eighth to quarter inch coverage. First thing I'm gonna do is just cover it and then I'll come back over with the bottom of the spoon to tamp it down. And again, you could use a sifter for this step, but I know I'm gonna be reclaiming most of this so it doesn't bother me to just scoop it on there. Now I'm just gonna start tamping it down on here. And I am gonna put a link, uh, by the time you see this on YouTube, there should be a link in the description box below the video uh, to the uh, No Days site, or the No Days YouTube video where Carrie covers the different ways that you can do this. I'm doing the indirect method, so I am doing this separately off the glass. You can also put your powder wafer on your glass to do this step. I'm just making this up ahead of time or making these pieces up ahead of time as components. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm just making this up ahead of time. Okay. We're making these pieces. That's funny. Do you ever do that with, <laughs> does Siri ever do that to you? It's kind of freaky because it tells me that uh, they're listening even when I don't say the famous hey S-I-R-I. Now, if she replies to that, I'm really going to be freaked out. <laughs> All right, I think that is looking good. I am now going to take this whole piece here, the sheet, and I'm going to set it directly on my griddle. And I'm going to let it go for about 8 to 10 minutes. So I'm going to pause the camera and I'll come back right before I am going to check it to see how it's doing. I probably did a little overkill because this is quite heavy. I'm just going to set it right in the middle of the griddle. Middle of the griddle. A little right in there. <laughs> and check back again in about 8 to 10 minutes. Okay, I've got maybe close to a couple of minutes. My alarm on my watch will go off. Off camera, I went ahead and did two of those smaller leaves with some flame opal. And then I also did uh, two with the mantis. I'm not sure why that just snapped a photo. Interesting. Hopefully this is catching video. Uh, so I got mantis and uh, flame opal on the other leaves. Um, I did, this time I sifted the powder down, so it'll be interesting to see if they pick up uh, more or less uh, color from the bottom. Uh, and I forgot to empty some of my powder back in here. So if you haven't done this before, this is why I put a sheet of paper down is to capture this. I'm just going to pick it up and do this. And I have to share something really funny or funny to me this morning. As I was just putting the mantis powder down onto the uh, the powder wafers, guess what fell out? A little bitty uh, clover that I had done. Oh gosh, Shelly, I think it was the day that you and I were playing with powder wafers, which was uh, way too long ago. We got to get together again. But anyway, this was apparently in my powder thing here. So this one hasn't been fired, but hopefully you can see that. It is ready to go onto a piece of glass and I'll have to set that aside and use it when I'm ready to do something else for St. Patrick's Day. So these are still uh, doing their thing on the griddle. 
I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera again and wait until it's ready to, oh, there, we've got one that's been going for nine minutes. That's the center one. And at this point, I know I need to reset my timer for another five minutes. So I'm gonna do that right now to capture the flame opal from when I put that on. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this off. Using a spatula, you could use a scraper. I'm probably gonna make a mess of this. This is why I have a tile out here. Honestly, I'll probably just try to just slide it off onto the tile. And I can always take my paintbrush and brush any excess powder. But let's see what we got here. And you know what? I put my tweezers away. Let me go grab my tweezers. All right, I have a longer pair of tweezers here. I'm going to see if I can take a look at the wafer and see how it looks. I do see it's covered in powder. Looks like it might need a little more time though. It, it doesn't quite look wet, but it doesn't quite look like what I would expect it to. I'm going to put it back down for just a couple more minutes and then I'll check it again. Oh, and I broke a piece off. All right, maybe it has been down long enough. And again, this was the older, yeah, see, this was the older set that I had. All right, I should have my mask on. I apologize, I did not do it here. So normally this should come out as one nice piece. I'm not sure what I did wrong. I don't know if it's because this is an older bit of powder wafer. I could try to fire these together, to, but to be honest, I'm probably not going to. I think I did try that in the past with broken pieces and it didn't work so well even when I added extra powder. So I'm going to just reclaim all of the powder I can. I am gonna put my mask back on and dump this back into the jar. All right, well, that's a bummer. I was hoping that snowflake would turn out. I might cut some out of the not quite as old material. And yes, I do have my mask on now. Uh, on second thought, I'm probably just gonna let that go because I did not think to clean this up before I used it. So there could be other stuff that would contaminate my powder. I'm just going to... that and then also I am going to go ahead and wipe it down that way as I take the other ones off I can save the powder that I dump off of them and this will go into the garbage okay I did pull the flame opal pieces off and they just were falling apart so I'm thinking that I might have my heat just a little too high but let's take a look and see what we got on the green ones here they haven't been on quite as long it's like a treasure hunt trying to find them under here there we go That one looks all right. I'm, I am going to add a little more powder, but let's see if we can find the other one in here. Let me get my trusty piece of paper underneath my powder. Just so I'm not wasting it. It's a precious resource, you know. Especially, I don't know if you've seen Val Post, but I think there are some uh, supply chain issues. All right, I have another one that looks like it disintegrated. So I know I've used powder wafer successfully many times. I think I have a combination of things going on today. I think I have some older, well, I know I have some older material, but I also think my heat might have been just a little too high. So I did bump it down a bit. I am going to try this one a second time just because I want you to see. And if you remember, this one is perfect. I mean, this one's ready to fire onto some glass. This one, it's kind of curling up on the edges, which tells me I either left it on too long, which I didn't, or I had my temp too high, which I likely did. So I'm just trying to straighten it out a little bit. 
And honestly, I probably don't need to add any more powder, but I wanna show you a little trick. I told you I'd, I in the last video that I would show you something I do with the center pole. So first let me make sure I get all of the pieces out of here. Otherwise I'll get a surprise like I did today with the clover. So I wanna dump this back into my powder jar. One have at least one of these turn out. I can see the snowflake looks good. It's just that it broke. And I, again, probably had the heat too high. I do see, let's see if this is showing up on camera, a little bit of a wet spot there, which means uh, it's not as saturated there. So I would definitely go back over with a little more powder. And I may just do that even though this one broke, just to show you how, I'm, how I am going to do that. Again, I did turn the temp down a little bit. Let's go ahead and before I do anything else, reclaim this powder. I am just gonna go ahead and reuse the same piece here for this leaf. Yeah, just unfortunate events today. I don't know. Uh, this wasn't my day to do this, I guess, but we're gonna do some other things as well. Let's see, there I am using we again. So again, this one would probably be all right without adding any more powder, but if you did wanna make sure you had some good coverage, this is where I have the synthropol mixed in with the water, just a few drops per ounce of water, or a few drops per like six to eight ounces of water. This jar, or this bottle's getting a little empty. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mist it and now you see it looks nice and wet there. Hopefully that shows up well on camera. And now I'm just gonna do the traditional sift some powder over it. I probably should have done that off of my carrier sheet because now this is gonna stick to my carrier sheet. But you know what, that's okay. I do still have my mask on. I didn't worry about getting any more powders on the bottom. But I do want to just cover this well again. And I did this for some, <clears throat> excuse me, that I made last, I think it was last year, probably closer to two years ago, the way it goes these days. <clears throat> excuse me. And I just, I had some letters. I was doing a dish that said, uh, I think it said live, laugh, wolf on it. Uh, and had a paw print and the letters just didn't look quite saturated enough so what I did was I just went over it with that synthropol and sipped it on a little more powder and it came out awesome and the finished piece came out awesome and I'll try to find that and uh, include a picture of it in here in the video. All right I think that's enough. Like I said this one probably had enough already but I'm just going to go ahead and put this back on the griddle and this time I'm just going to go maybe a, probably five minutes. So I'll pause the camera and I'm going to clean this mess up and we'll be back to see what happens with this leaf. I pretty much forgot. I just said I was probably going to go ahead and add some more powder to this one. So same thing. I'm going to just mist it with the synthropol till the entire thing looks damp. Sorry this one's broken. But you know what? It is what it is. We're going to work through it. And I did decide to just go ahead and leave it on the carrier sheet. I'm sure I don't have any of the green on my sifter. And I'm just going to sift. Again, wearing my mask. And this is just going to give it that extra bit of powder. If you've worked with Val's powders, you know that they are uh, quite... It's, uh, saturated in color. Again, this one is a transparent, so I think adding a little more probably isn't going to hurt anything. And I've got that pretty even, and I'm just going to go ahead and set that back on my griddle. This one is just about to come off. Actually, I think I will pull this one off. one back down 
and I'm going to let that one go for probably another five minutes or so. So I'll check back in just a few. Oh, I suppose I could look at my leaf here now. Really just trying to get all the excess off of it. So this leaf is now ready to add to a piece of glass and fire it. Same with the this little leftover guy that I had here from a while back. I'm not sure. If, well, it must have been mantis if I had poured it into my jar. But this is two of the powder wafers that are ready to fire onto some glass. Uh, there is a schedule that they recommend. And again, I'm going to link to the no days video. I'm going to set these aside. I'm going to reclaim this green powder before I lose any more of it. And a little bit of it is stuck to the paper. I'm not going to worry about that. I'll clean all this up. Uh, by the time I do that, it'll be ready to take the snowflake back off of there and we'll take a look. Okay, I've got most of my mess cleaned up, ready to toss aside what I'm not using. I've got my pieces that are ready to use on glass, ready to go. And now we're just going to pull the snowflake back off of here. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and shut off the griddle because I am done with what I'm going to do today using that. And I can clean that up when it's all done. So let's take a look at this. I probably should let it cool a little bit first. That could be why uh, part of why it broke the first time. So let's just take a look and see if we have any remaining kind of wet spots of where the powder didn't adhere. Okay, I am still seeing some really in the same spot that it was before. So this one, I probably should have left a little longer. I may have turned my heat down just a little too much, uh, but I think you get the idea. And if you, again, if you look at the link that I'll post from No Days, uh, there's more information in there. The other side is looking good. This was the bottom and that was down in the powder. So this probably could be fired just fine if it wouldn't have broken. You know, I could always just add a little bit more powder when I get ready to fire it. Uh, but yeah, this is the process for activating. Apologies that mine did not turn out as well today, but you know what? I, I have issues just like everybody does when fusing, uh, and I just wanted to share how it was going. So I am going to clean this mess up, and then I'm going to get ready for doing the next pieces, which I think... I will grab my mica paints and my glass line and we'll do the thin fire inclusions that I've got. So I'm going to pause the camera and get set up for that. All right, so I have gone and picked out some glass that I'm going to do for the next few projects here and the different techniques. The first one I'm going to do, remember I cut this stencil from adhesive stencil vinyl. I'm going to clean my glass and then I'm going to put this stencil down onto this glass. And for this one, I'm going to use, I already have some mixed up. I need to remix this. Uh, it is a mica paint, basically, that I've mixed. Um, that is, I'll have to look up the, <laughs> the measurements uh, before I even, I'll, I know I'll butcher it if I say it. But it is a mix of uh, A14 medium, which is a liquid medium. I got mine from uh, Kaiser Glass. It's also a mica powder and something that Kaiser sells called Kaiser Flux. I use a combination and I'll, I'll get the measurements and post it in the description or at the end, and or at the end of the video. But I'm gonna mix this up. I'm gonna clean my glass first thing. And I just have a towel and some alcohol and a spray bottle. I just wanna make sure that my surface is clean and if you see the other things that are sitting out here and might be wondering, hey, what are we doing? So another technique, I'm gonna use this Versamark pad and just some mica powder on a little piece of glass. I'm also gonna uh, stencil some onto this and I may even set it up like a screen just to show you how you can do that. And we'll continue from there. First one is going to be the mica paint and I've got something on my glass here that is being stubborn. 
actually I'll probably end up capping it as I think about that. So part of what I usually will do is I'll set my mic up first and then I'll uh, sprinkle a little clear powder over and cap it with clear. So multiple steps on this, uh, but again, I just wanted to share the different processes you can do. So I have my piece of clean glass. There are a couple ways you can put this stencil down. Uh, you can put some transfer tape against this and then peel the backing off. I think this one's going to be fine just trying to peel the backing off, but we'll find out. <laughs> See if I can get it started in the corner. And I think it's just about the size of my glass, so yeah. I just cut a piece, I believe it was four inches already, and I just cut it uh, by six. So this is a four by six. Size is really irrelevant on this right now. So let's go ahead and I'll just put one edge of the stencil vinyl down. Yeah, I may have wanted to use transfer tape just because I have such big openings from the uh, cutouts that I chose. But we'll try it. There's another way uh, you can put it down, kind of starting in the middle and working your way out. Well, let's just see how this does. The main thing is I just want to make sure it's down secure so that stuff doesn't leach underneath there. And hopefully I'm not blocking this. I did another video, and I'll try to remember to link to that as well, where I am using stencils to paint uh, the mica paint onto glass, and it came out really cool. This is just kind of a continuation, just showing a different way of cutting. For that one, I had cut, uh, I believe it was on my Cricut Maker. I have to go back and actually watch the video myself. Just trying to make sure that the stencil is down nice and secure around these leaves. I don't really care if it bubbled up a little bit in other areas as long as this is down. And I've done it both ways. I've peeled the stencil off while the paint is wet and I have removed it once it's dry. And I've had good and bad happen both ways. Um, today I think I will probably just peel it off while it's wet and show you what it looks like. So this looks pretty good. You can see that there is a nice bubble there, but again, yeah, it's it should be all right. And I can always go back and clean up anything that does leak out. So I've got my stencil on there, stuck down. I am going to take this paint mixture that I already have and stir it up and hopefully it doesn't need anything added to it because of course I didn't bring all my supplies out here. All I'm doing is just giving a good stir because it's been sitting in the cabinet, oh my gosh, probably a year or more. Sometimes life gets in the way of doing what you want to do creatively, right? I uh, haven't made as much in the last year, uh, videos or even just glass in general. But. I'm grateful to have a great job. It just has kept me really, really busy. And if you can see that, I'm just trying to make sure I get it nice and smooth, everything mixed in. I don't know if you can see the consistency, but it is a nice, uh, almost like a gluey, painty type consistency. I think I've heard uh, the term like melted ice cream. It all depends on what you're doing. And what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to use a little sponge dabber, dabber. You never know what these things are called. There's different types. This one, uh, these come apart, makes it easy for cleanup. Uh, this is a Martha Stewart. I also have uh, just these little guys. You usually get a bunch of them in a package. I've used them before too. And you can even use uh, just pieces of sponge. But I'm going to go with this foam. Maybe it's a pouncer. I feel like it might be called a pouncer. If you know what it's called, put it in the comments. <laughs> I'm sure I could look it up. All right, this looks pretty good to me. There could be a little 
couple little bumps or lumps in there. Just gonna try to salvage what I can there. And I don't care if it gets on that paper. I do have a piece of paper down and I'm just gonna dip this in. Sometimes I like to just come off on the paper a little bit. Now I'm just gonna start applying it. There's no need to go super heavy with mica if you've ever fired with it. Uh, the thing is, is it the only mica that's going to stick is what's against the glass. So if you come back over and put a whole lot on, a lot of it's just going to fade, or not fade, but just going to uh, not stick to it, basically. Pick that up. bit more. I think I might have even mixed this paint up when I did make that last video, which has been a while. Just want to make sure it's covered nice and evenly. I can still kind of see my outlines. could let it set a little bit and come back over it with more, but again, with mica, it's not really an advantage to add a lot more. So that looks good to me. I'm gonna peel that off, but first I'm gonna close this up. And I'm just gonna, kind of like a Band-Aid, try to rip this off fairly quickly. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. So I didn't quite get all of it in one pull, but you can see it looks nice and crisp there. And now I have this stamped. I do have a little bit of a mess here. I'm gonna come back over and clean that up. Uh, but this, I'm gonna let it sit and dry. I probably will pre-fire it just to set that mica and then uh, cap it with uh, some clear. And depending on the mica, sometimes you can lose it when you cap it. I have used this before and it has turned out all right. So I'm gonna pause the camera, clean up my mess, and we'll come back for the next piece. All right, I'm getting set up for the next process. This one, I just took one of the cardstock stencils that I had cut. If you remember, I had some that I cut on the Sizzix and I have just cut one of them down it's just cardstock, uh, so it's not going to be really be reusable for the process I'm doing here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape the stencil down in place. I have some painter's tape, and it's a little wide, so I think I can actually just save some of that. Don't want to cover any parts of my actual stencil. will be easy enough to remove later. Probably didn't need to tuck it under there because now it's just going to make it more difficult to remove, but that's all right. It's all good. This is kind of a big open stencil, so it's possible I'm going to get a little bit of mica kind of flaking out of the, you know, where I want it to go. That's all right. Uh, when I remove this, we can always go back and clean it up. I haven't done this for a very long time. I think I tried this early on when I was fusing, but I thought it would be another technique to try today. So I have my stencil design down on my glass. I have this, which is called Versamark. Uh, you can use it in stamping. Uh, you can use it as kind of a resist for some things. This though is going to just give this an, uh, kind of an area to let the mica adhere to on the glass. And then I'm gonna sift it over. I think I'm gonna use this sifter. I do have the tiny little one, uh, but we might be here all day trying to get that one done. So all I'm gonna do is take this pad and I did check to make sure it's still got some stuff because again, it's been sitting in a drawer for a while. Still perfect. All I'm gonna do is just take it down onto my glass. I'm actually gonna pick my glass up and make sure that I'm covering it well. Yes, it's getting on the paper, that's just fine. I'm gonna have mica sticking to my paper, 
but I can see it's getting on the glass. Probably going a little more than what I need to, but that's all right. I can already tell I'm probably gonna get mica up here as well. And you know what? I've got plenty of painter's tape. We will just cover anything that I don't want the mica to get onto, so. And if you've worked with it, you know it's very fine and makes quite the mess if you're not careful. All right, feeling a little better about that. It's kind of stuck to my paper. It is what it is. We're just gonna go with this. I am going to put on a mask because this is a very fine powdery dust. And now I've got, uh, this is another one that I got from Kaiser Glass. This is uh, copper. I thought that would look pretty on the Southwest, uh, or Southwest Fusers Reserve. I have a little stash of like three inch tiles cut downstairs from whenever I'm cutting bigger pieces and have something left over. I just have a little box where I put little three inch ones in. So I'm noticing that my mica almost seems a little damp. It's been closed up for a while, but I think it's still gonna work all right. It's not at this point. Make sure I've got this on camera. I'm going to go ahead and start sifting. Again, wearing respiratory protection. Yeah, for some reason this seems a little damp and clumpy. But I think it is going to be fine. I just want to make sure that I cover all of the openings. The other way you can do this, some people do it this way. And I was just thinking this might be another good use for the Centropol. I could come over it with a mist and just go back over it again. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, if I even if I put a heavy layer of mica on here, the only thing that's going to stay is where it's touching the glass. So I think that looks pretty good. Okay. So as you can see, hopefully you can see, I still have a lot left in my sifter. It's possible I had this out and left it out uncapped for a while and it picked up some moisture. Uh, humidity is always a wonderful thing. This time of year, I'm adding humidity into the house and in the summer, I'm trying to take it away. And you'll definitely want to wash out uh, any strainers that you use on mica before you use them for anything else. So I'm just going to set this aside to get it cleaned up. And let's go ahead and see what happens when we lift all of this off. I hope my giant hands aren't blocking everything. And if some of this spills on the table, no big deal. This is just a folding work table. kind of like cleaning up glitter. <laughs> if you've ever done projects with glitter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, and this side, because I folded it under, I'm trying not to slide that across. I should have grabbed a corner with tweezers. So the idea is, is that where the Versamark pad was, which was our opening, that's where the mica cling to it. I am going to just go ahead and dump off the excess. And I will come back through with a paintbrush. I could probably do that even right now, just to clean the design up a bit. I need a much smaller, finer paintbrush because I don't want to destroy, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't want to destroy the image that I have going there, but you get the idea. This is where you just want to come back through with a smaller paintbrush 
and clean off any excess where you don't want the mica. But that, again, is ready to fire. And I'll probably put it in the same uh, kiln mode that I put that black piece in that we just did with the mica paint just to set it up and see how it looks. So I'm gonna pause, clean my mess up, and we'll go on to the next thing. And I know I had said the thin fire, but I think since I have it right here, the next thing I'm gonna do is the etching. So let's clean some of this mess up. Okay, for this next project, I am going to use some etching cream and some dichroic. And I already know that these are gonna be really putsy trying to get the backings off, so just wanted to show you kind of the placement where I'm gonna put them, but I am gonna pause the camera, take all of these little individual pieces off their backings and stick them down onto the dichro. Uh, I ran across these, I've had them for years. They were in my dichro stash, they're just little pre-cuts. So I'm going to use those and they have little caps for them as well. Um, I'm honestly not sure if these are the 90 or the 96. I'm thinking they might be those color works, uh, which was a 90. Um, but the I know that the clear caps that I have for them are the same. This piece of dichro for sure I know is 96 because uh, it was in my 96 stash. These were two, but again, I bought them so long ago. Um, but I know they'll fire fine with the caps that I have for them. So I am going to pause the camera. I'm going to put these uh, cutouts that we did with the Sizzix onto the dichro, and then I'm going to get the etching cream ready to go. I do have gloves, and you will see when I open this. The last time I used it, I noticed I had turned brown, but from everything I looked into online, that's perfectly normal. Uh, it will turn brown over time, and it still works just fine. So I'm going to pause, get this set up to go, and then when I'm ready to apply the etching cream, we'll roll again. Okay, that didn't take as long as I thought it would. Uh, I have taken the backings off of all of those little leaves, and I have stuck them down, and I took the edge of a popsicle stick here and just made sure that I had them down really well. Similar to when you're applying paint, you don't want the etching cream to get under uh, anywhere where you want to leave the dichro. So what will happen if you haven't done this before, if you haven't seen my other videos, once I apply the etching cream and let it sit, wherever these uh, basically stickers are, you could use stickers for this as well, uh, but wherever these little cutouts from the stencils are, the dichro will stay, or that is the hope anyway. <laughs> That's why you don't want it to get underneath there. And then everything else should turn black. These are all on black backed pieces. You can do this on dichro that's clear as well, um, but it's easiest to see on the black or if you're doing it on clear to put a piece of black under it when you're trying to check it. This one as well, I made sure that I burnished it down. So now I am going to put on my gloves, mix this up a little bit and start applying it with my brush. right after I take a quick sip. I suppose I should use both gloves. I have gotten it on my skin before. It, it didn't burn. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, any kind of chemical, you should protect yourself. It's probably a good idea to wear a mask as well uh, if you're not in a very well ventilated space. And then the trick is getting the jar open. There we go. So yeah, mine has turned a nice chocolatey brown. <laughs> I should stir it away from my pieces. I did give it a bit of a shake too before I got started. And it probably would have been easier to pour some of this out into a little cup. Uh, but I think just using a paintbrush dipped down in there will be just fine. I don't even know why I bought a jar this size. This stuff is not cheap, I will tell you that. Uh, I just, you know, one of those things had to have some etch all and ended up with quite a large jar. So let's make sure you can see this. I'm just getting my brush down in there and I'm just going to generously apply it. You could probably even use that one of those little sponge pouncers for this. I just like to make sure that I'm getting a nice even coating all over the glass that I want to etch away and just turn black. 
And the wait time is gonna vary, probably depends on your glass. Uh, I'm going to, once I get these all done, I'll probably just set the timer for about 15 minutes. And then I'll give them a check. So you can see I've got it brushed all over my glass. I'm just gonna set that one down and start on one of the smaller ones. The other reason you wanna make sure that you have your uh, little stencil pieces or your cutouts down well is because if, if you don't, they'll start moving around as you apply your etching cream. And for some reason, I'm having a hard time <laughs> brushing onto this one. So I might just get dabbed on there. Because if you don't get it well covered, if you have some blank areas, it, it just won't etch there or it won't etch all the way through. And you can kind of see, maybe you can see, I have my little stickers or my little cutouts or hanging off the edge and that's just because of where I placed them. So no big deal. It actually probably make it easier when I want to remove them. Hopefully I don't have too much on here to where I do start lifting off the actual little cutouts. So I'm gonna set these here. I'm gonna set my timer. Hey Siri, set timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, counting down. And while that sits, I'm gonna pause the camera. I'm gonna figure out which project I'm gonna do next and I'll be right back. Okay, so through the magic of video editing, it has now been 15 minutes. My pieces, to me, as I just look at them here, it looks like I just see black uh, underneath. So I think they're ready to wash off. It's a little harder to see with the stuff being brown now versus the usual white when you first get it. But I'm gonna start with my first piece here. I'm just gonna start rinsing. And as you can hopefully see, I can see the dichroic design there. My stencils are still on there at this point. I don't know if I can yeah, I was able to pull it off with my glove on. Might need to use my tweezers when I get them back over to the table. This one's being a little more stubborn. It looks like I did lose the stem on that one. Or it could just be that my sticker is still on there. But anyway, that one's rinsed. See the die curl. I'm just going to do the same with the other two pieces. Water's getting a little too warm. Same thing. This was the one that was more yellow or gold. Everything around the cutouts has etched away to the base black, and I am left with just those designs. And this was one of the bigger ones that I said I didn't know if I would etch one of the bigger ones, but let's just see what happened. Not exactly sure how I'll use this piece. I might just incorporate it into another piece of glass. Okay, you can see that. So I'm going to dry these off and get them back over to the table and move my camera back over to the table and continue on. Okay, I've rinsed the pieces off. I'm just gonna clean them up a little bit. So I have a little bit of sticky on them from the adhesive on the stencils. And when you do this, you will notice that your black turns kind of cloudy looking. It's gonna shine right back up. When you put this in the kiln, uh, I typically cap my dichro when I do this uh, etching. And I do put a little bit of clear powder Try to remember, do I put clear powder? I think I do put clear powder between. I gotta go back and look at my notes from when I've done these in the past. 
or just look at some of my pictures. But here's the first one. You can see that. It's hard to pick it up on camera. Let's see if I can get it up into the light. There we go. So that one I'm going to set aside. Same thing with these two. I'm just going to clean them. And yes, I did lose the stems off the bottom of the maple leaves. And they were just so thin. I'm sure that they moved and the etching cream got under there. But there we have the two rounds that were more of a red and a yellow. I'm having a hard time telling if this is on camera. Let's see. I'm trying to get the light to hit it so you can see it. So those are etchings done, or etched etched glass done using, I used etch all, you can also use armor etch, I've used both uh, for this process. I don't really notice a difference in one versus the other, uh, but those are ready to fire. And the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to do stenciling, but I'm going to apply uh, my stencil to an actual screen for this one. And this was my screen I showed in the first video, it's pretty beat up. I have kind of set it up where I think I need it. I need to move this back a little bit. Excuse if I'm in the way here. I just have some guidelines just because once I put this stencil on, I'm really not going to be able to see uh, the glass. But I am going to put it on the other side. This might be a little high up. Normally I'll put it on the underside and I'll have this lifted on maybe a piece or two of glass. Um, so we'll see, it might be a little bit too high, but we're gonna try it anyway and see what happens. So I am going to, let's see, down here. So it's this upper one. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to apply some painter's tape, pardon my reach. I think I first saw this by Larry Pyle. Um, he does a lot of great things with glass. And he had done, I think he had just used an X-Acto knife to cut out a design and then taped it to a screen. And basically you're doing screen printing. I've done other videos screening. Uh, one I've got out there on YouTube that shows you how to create a screen using a uh, sheer curtain fabric and some HTV or iron-on vinyl, heat transfer vinyl, if you've not used it before. Those that have used it, you know what HTV is. But anyway, I've got this all taped off and now I am going to set it up onto the area where I think I need it. Can see my glass under there. Hopefully I'm not way far off. And I am going to put my mask on and I'm going to get some powder. The piece of glass I have there is just a little piece of vanilla cream. I'm using some peacock green uh, opal. So those of you that have worked with those colors know that they react. So it may turn more of a brown around the edges. Let's get up. All right, let's try this again. This time I'm just going to do a few more passes instead of trying to lift it and put it back down. So same thing. I am holding my screen in place. And just for good measure. And we're going to call that good. I'm going to carefully lift it. I didn't get it centered. But here you can see the leaf is definitely powder printed on there. It's not perfect. I do have a small paintbrush. I can go through there and clean it up a little bit. But I am going to set this one aside as it is ready to fire. And I'll get ready for the next project. Okay, the next project I'm going to work on is just some traditional uh, powder wafers where you're just putting powder you can do it onto a treated shelf uh, with kiln wash. I do like to use paper. I have just put this on a, I've just got an unglazed ceramic tile here and I may just pop this right into the kiln as it is, uh, or I may lift these off of here later. But I did tape 
I have some papyrus down. I just had a couple small pieces. I taped it down with scotch tape. That's not going to hurt it to put that in the kiln. That'll burn away. Um, only because this had been rolled up and I didn't want it to keep moving while I was working. And I'm going to do this a couple ways. One, I'm just going to have, if you remember from the first video, this was the Cricut Craft Board. So it's a little bit heavier than cardstock. I'm just going to put it right down against my paper. And I did create just some tabs by putting painter's tape on there. So it's easy to pick up once I'm done applying the powders. This one I wanted to lift a little bit. And you can do that different ways. You can either fold your cardstock or your, your stencil material. Uh, you could put a couple pieces of glass under it. I just went uh, real high tech here. I've got some craft sticks or popsicle sticks and these little foam dots. Oops, and now I'm sticking them all to my fingers. Just a second. Wanted to pick it up to show you. So I just have these little foam dots. You get a bunch of them in a package. I think those were from Dollar Tree. And I just put a couple under each one just to give it a little lift so that the, the powder will go a little bit heavier. These are kind of open designs again, so it may just scatter and go everywhere, but I do have my mask on. I am gonna pick some pretty colors. I'm gonna do yellow opal, red opal, and then I think I'll do this one in the Amazon green. And it's gonna be a little tough. I'm probably gonna put a piece of paper over this just so I don't get color where I don't want to. Normally I would do a single color, clean it up, you know, make sure I get my excess put back in the jar. I didn't really plan for that quite as well here, so I will, uh, we'll see what happens here. I'm gonna try to get a piece of paper. There's some scissors. Just to mask that other leaf so I don't get I guess it wouldn't hurt to get another color in there because leaves are do vary in color. But there, that way that one is covered and I can move this over when I'm getting ready to do the other one. So hopefully this is all in frame of the camera. Again, mask up, you're using powders. I'm gonna use my larger sifter for this one. Plus my medium one is probably still a little bit wet from washing the mica out of it. I am gonna set it on my piece of paper when I pour the powder out. You probably can't see this, but I'm just putting some powder in my sifter. And let's see. Just looking for a little tool and tweezers. Here we go. You just want to go nice and even with your powder over your stencil. These are going to be pretty delicate. And since I have my uh, cardstock or craft board right on the paper, I'm just trying to add enough to pretty much fill it in. And I don't want to get it too heavy on there, or this is where if you had a thinner material for your stencil, it would probably just collapse and make a mess on you. And I'm just going to give that a light tap. Make sure it's pretty even, and that looks good. I'm gonna put the excess back in my jar, along with what spilled out as I was getting it ready. If you can't see what I'm doing, I'm just putting my powder back in the jar. I don't like to waste. Glass plays are expensive. Some of these I've had for a while, but it still doesn't mean I wanna waste them. And I think I'll do, oops, I already had the lid off. I'll do yellow on this other one. Trying not to move my stencil. And I'm just gonna lay that there just to protect that. Again, it wouldn't hurt because those colors would look good together on the leaf. You could come back through and do multiple colors, but I'm just, for the purposes of demonstration, just doing a single color on each one. And I don't know why I poured that much powder in my sifter because I'm not going to need that. So same thing with this one.
I have to look up my notes and I will put a firing schedule uh, probably in the next video. This video, I'm more or less showing the different applications with all of the pieces we cut in the first one. And then the third part will be actual firing of all the different things. And some of these are gonna be in multiple steps. So just like the other one, I just kinda wanna make sure I've got a good coverage here. These are gonna be wafer thin. That's why they call them powder wafers. And I don't think I'm stealing this from anybody. This is a technique you can find all over the internet. Different people do it different ways. Um, so yeah, I'm not too worried. I don't think I'm sharing any big secret. Now I'm just reclaiming my powder. Smacking that sifter to make sure I got all the yellow out because yellow does react with green. And I'm just going to let that sit there while I do this last one. And again, this one is raised. Popsicle sticks under there. <clears throat> this one might be a bit messier, but let's see what happens. And that will, again, poured way too much in my sifter. This is Amazon green, another opal color. Yeah, I think I have this up too high. I think I'm going to make a big mess, actually. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. Kind of my motto, right? Let's see what happens. You can always take a brush and clean up any excess. Now, this one I'm definitely not going to fill all the way to the brim because it would be quite thick. And I think actually that looks pretty good. jar. I'm not gonna, well this one I might be able to reclaim because I don't have two different colors going on the same sheet. Of course, let's put it back out of my way. So I'm going to carefully lift this one. Actually that looks really good. Hopefully you can see that. It's hard to say what the thickness is but I think it looks pretty good. Before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and reclaim that green powder. Because, hey, every little bit is some money saved. Now, I definitely could have come back and done other ones on this same piece of paper. Just doing this as a demo, so we're not going to do that today. But I am going to carefully lift this one since it is right against the paper. And I think I got it a little too thick. And I did not bring up... The tool I have but I do have one of those wax backs that ear wax remover I can go in uh, with that to clean up I can also just take a small paintbrush clean it up I might have it a little thick although looking at it it looks pretty close to the other one uh, but yeah I'll go get my wax back and clean this up a little bit I'm gonna pause the camera Okay, I ran down and picked up the wax vac. I have actually put a needle tip in here before using uh, one of the glassoline paint tips. I don't have that in there today. I just have one of the little kind of rubbery plastic things. I'm not going to worry too much about some of this excess, but I do want to pick up like any obvious big messes. And you definitely want to have a mask on when you're using this thing because it will start to kick some powder out sometimes. Now this is where if I had the needle tip it would be a little easier to get around the intricate shape. So hopefully you can see that already looks better. This one isn't too bad. I'm afraid I might get too much taken out of there, which could cause this to really be fragile and break. 
This one looks pretty good. I'm just going to clean around the edges. So there you have more or less traditional powder wafers where it's just powder uh, on your shelf or in this case on shelf paper. And I will fire these, not super hot. I, I want to say it's typically like a tack fuse, but I will look up my notes and uh, make sure that I have a firing schedule that I can share with you. So I'm going to pause the camera and get ready for my next idea. Okay, next up, I am going to try something I have not tried before. I don't know if this is going to work. Yes, I've done freeze and fuse, but if you remember from the first video, I cut a leaf out of the, I think it's quarter inch foam board, like you can get at the craft store. I've hot glued these together, which <laughs> after I pop it into the freezer, I'm not really sure if that's going to work because it might loosen that, uh, but it is somewhat flexible. And I do have enough depth there that I think it could work. Not too sure about the stem. Uh, if you remember on the first video, I had, I had to cut that out just a little bit thicker. Uh, but we're going to try it and see what happens. Probably what I'll end up doing is if this does work and I'm able to pop it out of there, all right, I'm going to put another piece of paper down and I'll just fire this when I fire my other powder wafers because I believe they're going to fire at about the same schedule. So I'm going to put this down. I'm going to put my mask back on because I'm going to be working with powders. I think I'll do the red opal on this one. I thought I had flame opal out earlier. Yes, I did. And now I'm trying to remember if I used flame or red on that. You know what? It doesn't matter. We're going to stick with red. We're going to do a red maple leaf uh, there for my friends in Canada. <laughs> All right, let's get the mask on. And there are different ways of doing freeze and fuse, just like everything. There's not a single way of doing it. Uh, some people put their powder in and then add their water a few drops at a time. I'm just going to mix up kind of a slurry of powder and water. I'm sure I've got more than enough in there. Make sure that's showing up on video. Again, depending on the quality of your water, you might need to use uh, bottled water or distilled water. This is just tap water in my bottle. Right now it's pretty crumbly, but it's one of those things where it's very easy to go from not enough liquid to way too much. So I want to make sure that it gets to a consistency where I can more or less just kind of push it into the mold. This is, to me, it's too thick. And now I probably just made it too thin, like I just said. <laughs> see if you can see that. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll mix it up and then I'll let it sit for a couple minutes and let the clear water go to the top, pour that off, and then what I'm left with is the perfect consistency. I might have to do that here. Let's see if I can find something to pour that into. Of course, I didn't bring any extra cups out here. Be right back. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but it is, it, there is clear water up at the top. I'm going to pour a little bit of it off. Just until the powder starts to get into my mixture. Now I'm going to mix it up again. And sometimes I end up pouring too much water off, but this is looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna start to pour this into the cavity of my makeshift mold here. Not too worried if I get some excess on the top here. I did forget my magic, uh, Oh, I don't know what you want to call it, tool, which is toilet paper to soak up the excess water. Now again, this could be leaching underneath my cutout, I'm not sure. But that's why we're testing this, to see what happens. Okay, I think I have enough in there that it should be filling the cavity of the mold. I'll let that sit. Never throw out your powders from freeze and fuse, even if there's water in it, because what'll happen is 
you just let this set the water will evaporate out of it and then you're just left with powder again and you could sift it if you if it seems a little clumpy depending on the humidity in your home but normally i just let it set and then i just put it back in the jar so that's okay this one i'll just throw out what's in there but i am going to pause the camera and i'm going to go get some toilet paper okay i grabbed some toilet paper i did pop my mask off because i don't really have any powders in the air now at this point i'm just going to put a couple sheets down i have found that the cheaper like the one ply toilet paper works best uh, this was just what i had on hand close by just soaking up that excess water now i probably should come back over it and try to just have powder for the shape. Because otherwise this is gonna probably just look like a blob when I pop it out. <laughs> what happens when you let it go too far over <laughs> but you know what I'm really just testing to see does this work as a mold so at this point I'm just gonna leave that be I'm gonna go set this into the freezer the nice thing is usually I have to have some cardboard or something under it because this is this thick I think I can just take this straight over to the freezer and set it in there so I'm going to put this in the freezer. I'm going to let it sit eh, probably about 20 to 30 minutes, and then we'll see if it pops out. All right, it's actually been about 30 minutes or so. I am going to now grab the freeze and fuse attempt out of the freezer. And I wanted to go ahead and start the camera rolling because once I get it over here, you don't have a lot of time to work with it. So I want to just get it popped out and onto the paper if it's going to work. So let's see. All right, this is my piece. This is out after it's been in the freezer. I just want to see if I can get this to pop out. It's not as flexible as I thought it would be, <laughs> being the foam. But let's see what we got here. This one might not be a great idea, but again, I wanted to test it. There's such an availability of silicone molds these days that you wouldn't really need to do this, but I had to try it. Seems like it's actually stuck to my foam. <laughs> in there pretty well. So here you can see I had all that excess around it. Uh, not liking that. I would like to take a craft knife to that. <laughs> and I do have a little bit of foam stuck in there too. So let's see if I can clean this up without completely destroying it. Feels a little bit like Mythbusters. I can't even talk. Mythbusters. If you used to watch that, kind of see, hey, will this work or not? And this one, probably not as good of an idea, but I'm still going to go ahead and fire this leaf if I don't destroy it. starting to kind of just crumble so that's why I'm trying to work quickly. I still have a bit of stem. I don't want that foam in there. There we go. I have just a piece of foam I'm trying to get out of my glass. There we go. 
One more little one. All right, foam is off of it. Oh, one little one there. I need to get it down onto my paper before I destroy any more of it. And I just found another piece of foam. Okay, so this one, a little bit of a bust. Not sure this was the best uh, use of time and effort, but I am gonna put it down there. I do see that there is still a little piece of foam on it, but that's okay, I'll clean that off of there. I think I can just grab it with tweezers or my knife tip. Yeah, there it is. I almost got red powder on my green leaf. All right, I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna do the Murini piece with the cutout. And that's gonna be the last one for this video. Uh, and then I'll have one more video actually firing these things. So let me pause the camera and get ready for that last uh, setup and I'll be right back. Okay, I lied. The next one is not the last one. The next one is not the Murini piece. I forgot, I still had these pieces of thin fire and papyrus that I wanted to add some enamel to just for color. And I found a piece of glass I already had cut. This is a six inch round. This was a six and a half inch round, uh, but I just ended up cutting the rim off of it so that it's six inches to place over it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set my glass aside. I was just kind of laying out to see, okay, how many pieces do I wanna do? I think I'm gonna try four leaves. Two of them are papyros, two of them are thin fire. I'll be able to see which is which uh, before I fire them and I'll probably make a note on my paper itself. I think what I'm gonna do is just set these on this plate just for easier cleanup. And then all I'm gonna do is take some of this glass line paint, put a little glob down, and then just kind of sponge it on along with, I have some metallic copper. So I have dark green metallic copper. No idea how these will end up looking, um, but I have fired thin fire between glass before. I've had it turn out perfect. I've had it turn out not so perfect, and I've had some that actually burned and looked awful and really following the same process. So. Uh, we're going to hope that these work. The last ones I did uh, where I did a little bit of glass line on thin fire, it came out just fine. And I'll see if I can find that picture and post in here as well. But I'm going to go ahead and squeeze a little bit of this out, try to shake it up. It has been in the cabinet for a very long time. I'm not even sure that it's liquid form, but it can be a little bit thick for this. That's probably way more than I need. Let's see if I can get some of that picked back up. And that's why we have popsicle sticks here. So I really don't think I'm gonna need all this. I probably should have put my gloves on and I think I will before I get going too far. I'm sure I probably will end up needing more. I just didn't want to put a whole lot out to begin with. Let's see if the green comes out. All right, now I'm going to <clears throat> put my gloves on just so I don't have such a mess. I'm just going to use a little sponge and I'm just going to use the same one for all my for both colors. I'm not too worried. Again, this is more about the technique than the actual Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Aesthetic. <laughs> I think they'll turn out all right. But yeah, I'm going to pick up some enamel or some paint. I need to move my head out of the way. And I'm just going to start dabbing it onto these pieces. I'm going to be using both colors, so I'm just kind of starting out a little bit light. Oops, except for that one that I just dropped the popsicle stick on. Probably easier to just pick them up and do this.
You could add some micas to this. You could probably blend your colors. If they don't completely cover and they look a little rustic, that's okay with me as well. I might end up just putting these on a sheet of paper. Let's see. Oh, I don't have the border of the plate in my way. Let's see. And I'm not worried about uh, paint getting on the bottom sides of these. That's not going to hurt anything. It might make it harder for me to tell which one was which. Um, but I've I've done this with both Papyrus and with Thin Fire. Works the same. All right. So I've got quite a bit of my metallic copper color down. I'm going to try now to pick up some of this green. This is a pretty dark green, so I don't know how it's gonna look with this copper, but. And you know, rustic everything seems to be in these days, so if it looks rustic, I am okay with that. All right, this one is a thin fire. So I'm just gonna set it, yeah, actually I'm just gonna set it on another clean piece of paper. I think I'll put my two thin fire pieces on one side or at the top and my other two at the bottom just for keeping them straight. I would like a little bit more of the metallic copper here. All right, so hopefully you can see that I've added some paint. I'm just gonna set this one aside. Again, that one is Thin Fire. So that means that this other maple leaf here is the Papyrus one. Let's add some green. Whoops. And you don't even have to add enamels. I've done these where I've just literally put, uh, just cut Thin Fire or Papyrus in between. Take a cleaner piece of the sponge if you have some left to just take lift a little bit of it back off. All right, I think this one looks pretty good. Just a touch more green. Hardest part of any art project, right? Knowing when you're done. <laughs> Who is with me on that? Okay. It up. So this one, a little bit. again, pretty rustic looking. I'm just going to set it here. They do kind of look like faded fall leaves though. I like it. And let's use up what we got here. Okay, I went pretty heavy on that one. I'm going to wipe a little bit back off. Pick up some copper. This appears to be thin fire. It does feel a little bit thinner. There. Let me just double check the back of this one. Yeah, and this one does feel a little heavier. So that one thin fire, these two papyros.
I think. Or did I get that backwards already? Yes, papyrus. Now I probably keep getting out of camera range here. Just picking up the last of my enamel. This one's got a bit more white on it than I probably want. No, it's probably too heavy. So we're just gonna stop there. So I've got my four pieces of shelf paper that have been painted. Let's see if I can put this up in camera range. You can see those. I'm just gonna let that dry a bit. Uh, it won't take long at all because the stuff does dry pretty fast, uh, especially putting it on with a sponge. I could do more. I've got a few more cutouts, but I'm just gonna move on to the next project. So I'm gonna clean this up and get ready to do what will be the last one on this video. And that will be using my uh, fiber cutout to make a Mirini flower. Okay, I gotta double check my video I just shot because I was way zoomed in when I got ready to do this one. Uh, so here I did put my pieces down onto my glass. Right now the clear glass is sitting under it, but when I get ready to fire it, that will be on top and I'll share some tips about uh, when that fires, but that will be in the next video. Uh, but the last one I'm gonna do in this one today is going to be uh, this piece where I cut out the flower shape and then I glued these two pieces of 1 8 inch fiber together and I'm just gonna drop in some Murini. If you saw my little bird piece that I made and I did the flower dish, uh, same process. I was inspired by Jameson uh, Schuler, who had been doing some crosses at the time, uh, doing the same type of thing with a cutout of fiber. So I thought, ooh, let's try this. So I thought I would just show you, you know, one more use for the Sizzix. I'm just gonna go through and fill this up. And I'm not gonna be talking through this because I am gonna speed up the video, uh, but all I'm doing is just grabbing these pieces. I've got a bunch already chopped up, so I'm just gonna fill it in randomly. So here we go, and hopefully I don't block a lot of this. So I have all of my little pieces of Murini placed. It's kind of a pain for me. I'm not good with small putsy things because my hands are not very steady. So you probably saw even when I speed it up, uh, knocking some over. Some I had to take out. They just weren't sitting level enough. They're not all the same height, but I tried to get mostly around the same size. Uh, but this I'm gonna put in and 
pretty much do an attack fuse and then I'll apply it to something else. So what we've done today or what I've done today is I painted my pieces and you know I'm actually, I am going to put my clear on top of that just to keep them flat. So as you can see, as they dried, they're kind of curling up a little bit. This is not quite ready to go in the kiln. Uh, well, it is ready. I, I do have to do a little bit more prep. I'm gonna put some powder down. But I'm just gonna set that there to let them flatten while they completely dry. So let me grab everything that I did today and we'll just take one more look. All right, I grabbed my phone out of the little brace it was in. So sorry for the shadows, but there are the pieces that were cut from Thin Fire and Papyrus with some glass line paint added to them. Here's the little Murini piece I just filled in. These are the etched pieces. Can't wait to see how those look fired. Uh, this was just powder screened onto a piece of base glass. This was mica powder added over the Versamark. And this was mica paints mixed up. And then the other things I did were the powder wafers and the freeze and fuse. Those are down in my kiln. Uh, all I'm going to do is add this Murini piece and I'm going to fire those up. And I will get a firing schedule together. I'll probably put the firing schedules all together in the last video. Uh, but I wanted to show what I did today in this one. And the next video will be basically in and out of the kiln with the different pieces and seeing how they come out. So as always, thanks for watching. All right, I thought I would go ahead and add this clip to the same video. I did rethink what I was gonna fire together. The Murini piece, I went back and looked at my notes and I typically did a full fuse in that. So this stuff, I'm really only taking more to attack fuse. Uh, for the two pieces that had mica, that was the mica powder on Versamark and that was the mica paint. Uh, I only wanna just really set that so that I can add my top layers later on to cap it. There's my freeze and fuse piece. <laughs> I bumped it a little, moving it over here. It's not looking lovely, but again, that was a total, total experiment. So we'll just see what happens. Uh, my powders moved a little bit when I moved these off of the other uh, tile onto the shelf. But I think in the end, everything's gonna be fine. I'm gonna fire these up to probably 1250 and hold about 10 minutes and then bring them back down. Again, just attack fuse. Somebody's trying to say something over here. You got something to say? <laughs> Rocco, he's been so good and so quiet and so patient all day today. But anyway, I'm going to fire the kiln up and I'm going to get the other pieces ready for a full fuse, including those dichroic pieces. Uh, so more to come. But again, thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great day.